My journey about somatic consent in Tantra is almost 25 years old and it has been evolving and developing over the years. I was looking in the last week into edging and about FAP, no FAP, so what edging is and how this is in relationship to somatic consent and what the meaning of all that is behind. FAP meets the sound of FAP, 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 FAP when you self-pleasure, when you masturbate, literally. And so FAP means then you're not doing FAP. I was looking over years into the dynamics of self-pleasure and masturbation in many people's behavior that most people live their sexuality, or if they're self-pleasure or if they're in relationship, whatever they do, that sexuality has a beginning and has an end that is based on the procreative dynamic in the nervous system. It's not an addiction, but let's say every addiction is a substitution of that. So every addiction is based on the mother of all addictions, what is literally procreation. This is the, how the reward system is wired and the reward system works. And that's why it feels so good. So having sex and, and climaxing. And procreation, so making babies, is addictive cycle in the reward center. It's not an addictive cycle because the word addiction doesn't exist that long that you can put procreation on top of addiction. No, no, it's differently. So addiction got created, I don't know, in the 60s or in the 70s as a term. And everything that I was researching that's based on addiction is a substitution of this reward behavior. So you have a goal. You do something is not like the action towards something. It's the goal of the action and the satisfaction of the imagination to going there, the drive towards it. And then as well, seeing as the NoFap came alive a few years ago, that many people, mostly men, are addicted to porn. And then how have they actually worked in this dynamics? How is the brain operating? How is the dopamine pathway literally creating this? And and how the visual stimuli through the eyes is bypassing everything below the neck that the entire somatic stimulation of the body so all these other pathways just not existing it just goes in here it just like goes straight in the brain and nothing else is happening so it's a, it's a pure visual dopamine pathway and it is satisfactory and one of the most important pieces is that edging has been guiding most people in a deeper level of addiction so that they thought of when they masturbate they don't climax because climaxing has this big dopamine release they actually started watching pornography and we're etching to pornography without climaxing, what is actually creating even a deeper and intense disturbance of the dopamine pathway. You know, when mostly men and there as well a lot of women start getting addicted to porn, they have a similar behavior. People who masturbate to porn in the old fab dynamic, they just watch it, they get turned on, and then they have a climax after a few minutes and then they switch it off. And it's a little bit like you know one porn, you know every porn. And the average that to engage in porn and fab and dynamic of sexuality and arousal till the climax was 7.5 minutes worldwide. Yeah. And when you just look in most pornographies, so all the short clips and, and actual engagement, you know, there's barely a clip that is longer than seven, eight minutes. Because when people masturbate or having sex, it just takes this time. And if you know one porn, you know every porn because it just starts with sexual arousal and it ends with a climax, however that climax looks like. When you have had a satisfactory pathway through pornography or, or a visual stimuli, that people don't go back to this clip they don't go back to this very scene and so people started to novel on pornography and etching and created such an addictive state in their brain because they couldn't get rid of that. So their entire social behavior completely changed. So what is happening about the dopamine pathway is that when you get a dopamine pathway activated, so the dopamine neurotransmitter, they are wired that way when they connect, they activating the neighbor transmitter and they're getting activated as well so you need more and more stimuli to get the same amount of satisfaction therefore you just need to have more dopamine receptor fired and that means that's the reason why people getting kind of numb to certain substances as well to pornography and that's the reason what this pathway of dopamine is literally creating in the nervous system my god this is so good how can i get more yeah. And then the more on one level will not reach the same satisfaction, then something comes in and that's boredom. So people who are not satisfied, they're bored. It's just like they need a kick, they need something else. 
And then I was looking into the other dynamic of edging when it comes to this pathway of that what we're doing here with the hands for example. And that is not the visual pathway, it's the somatic pathway, so the inflow, the sensory pathway, and that is oxytocin based. It is not based on fantasies, it's not based on visual stimuli through watching something. It's based on feelings and emotions and sensations in the body. And what that does is it activates the serotonin pathway of the nervous system. And what serotonin synapses do is when they connect, they inhibit the next receptors. And what that does in the body, it just creates a level of contentment and relaxation and ease and says just like, oh my god, this is perfect as it is, I don't need anything else. Yeah? And that's the idea of sensual and relaxation-based edging in this place is what creates literally a deep level of contentment and relaxation. And I was researching that what the spiritual aspect of that is and how the release of DMT through melatonin and serotonin and all that is released in the pineal gland and how this is firing up the cerebrospinal fluid and you know where the brain is swimming in and all that kind of stuff. It's absolutely fascinating to see the difference. <clears throat> you can measure the difference between a dopamine pathway and an serotonin pathway in people when they're coming in connection with the object that they say on one point yeah this is good but what are we doing next yeah and when they actually start feeling and just like yeah kind of i, I like that but I, I bored i need something more and what that does is the difference between the dopamine pathway and satisfaction and the oxytocin pathway or the serotonin pathway and contentment, there's a gap in between. And that gap in between, this is what is literally creating boredom because people who need to go down from their dopamine release into having enough of oxytocin and serotonin that they feel contentment, that needs time. And that's why the continuum of this practice is helping people to find deeper layers of relaxation because it creates new neurological pathways. So when you think in terms of neuroplasticity, it just like rewires the brain and it rewires different pathways of the nervous system. And that's why this practice is so freeing. Anything to ask, whatever you have around that.